Hey there everybody and welcome back to my channel. Before I get too deep into this, I want to go ahead and state for the time being, this series is bi-weekly. That said though, there is a lot on the way and a ton of movies to cover. Released in 2002, Godzilla against Mechagodzilla is once again resetting the timeline in the Millennium Era. However, this is for a very good valid reason, and due to the fact that the last movie was so amazing that I don't feel like we need to build on any further into that movie, and we can't just connect it to Godzilla vs. Mechagirus. This movie requires a small adjustment at the end of the original, but this makes the events of this movie happen in the first place, and despite the fact this might be small, it changes the complexion of everything. In the original, it was clear that everything about Godzilla had dissolved, flesh, bones, and all. However, a key central idea for this film makes sure that Godzilla's bones are necessary. Godzilla's skeletal frame will be recovered in order to create this new variation of Mechagodzilla, known as Kiryu. Furthermore, because of this, this Mechagodzilla will have a ton of character, calling back to its past life that it wants to live, which this Mechagodzilla, or Kiryu, is set way apart from the 93 counterpart, which was nothing more than just a machine. And I want to make it clear, I'm not knocking the 93 variation or the original one, but this one just has a big sense of depth that we didn't see exactly in those previous movies. This is on another level. I want to also state, after watching the Godzilla series this far in, there's something that I really appreciate. It's the fact that if we're going to go ahead and bring back an old classic kaiju from years ago, we're going to reinvent him with a new idea, a new origin story rather than just copying and pasting an old idea and inserting it right into this movie just so we can sell a new movie. It makes everything feel fresh and new. Establishing a classic kaiju, and let's give them a fresh new original spin that separates the identity of this one. I should also stress this film is unique in a sense in the Millennium Era due to the fact that it doesn't just reference the original Godzilla movie, but the original Mothra in War of the Gargantuas. Make no mistake, this doesn't mean that the Showa era is all canon in this film's universe, but it acknowledges the terror that Japan has been dealt since the original Godzilla had appeared. In other words, a curse. Plus, merely mentioning Mothra is a perfect way for foreshadowing the events of the incoming next film, Godzilla Tokyo SOS. As a kid, this one was special. The moment I first saw Godzilla in Godzilla 2000, I wanted to see a Millennium Mechagodzilla, even to the point that I drew my very own depiction of Mechagodzilla 2000. While I was so concerned about seeing a brand new kaiju in the last film, Mechagodzilla is one that I was willing to give a pass. This one just took everybody by storm, and Godzilla's redesign, maybe it's not an exact replica of, say, the Godzilla 2000 design, but it's one of the most articulate designs as far as the facial expressions go. Everything was set so perfectly for this film. So Godzilla against Mechagodzilla kinda shares a similar plot idea to Godzilla vs. Mechagears. The only thing I like to point out about this film though, is I feel like it is much better in development for characters. This isn't just a plot line where Godzilla kills individuals close to Kane, it's the story of guilt, shame, individual who longs to change the past after Godzilla has trampled her squad members. She's already lost enough from her family, questioning her own life, looking at it from a nihilistic point of view. The events of this movie kick off extremely fast in the year 1999 with a brand new Godzilla surfacing. With this comes further questions. How will the government officials defend the people? From this brand new terror, given that Godzilla could return any day, the answer falls on creating a machine from the remains of the original Godzilla and its brand new weapon Absolute Zero which should eradicate this Godzilla problem in theory. Without resorting to Dr. Shirazawa's weapon that he feared that would be recreated. Out of respect, that weapon won't be touched again. So yeah, Kiryu outpowers Godzilla, but there's one thing that's unaccounted for. Godzilla's roar triggers a reaction which causes the inner Godzilla 1954 to remember its destructive nature, and the humans lose control. This scene is actually one of my favorite moments in this film. It's not just because of the destruction sequence, or the fact that we're seeing the inner nature that this Mechagodzilla beholds, but it brings further questions about who approved this, and can it be trusted with its link to the current Godzilla? Speaking of trust, it's already bad enough that Akane isn't trusted by her own people, because of the fact that her name is on this project, which leads to everyone becoming demoralized. Another important aspect for this film that needs to be brought up is Sarah, who is kind of a minor protagonist, but while so, she shares a similar background to Akane, suffering the loss of her own mother, but remains close to her father who's also on the Kiryu project. For Sarah, she's an individual clinging onto a connection to her mother 
through a pot of sleeping grass and is told by Akane that she has to let go of the past. However, this is something that Akane has failed to do herself. So let's pause and kind of think about this. I adore everything about this movie, about how all of these little plot lines all connect. It feels way better and just more overall structured than Godzilla vs. Mechagirus. That was one of the biggest issues I had about that film, because I didn't seem to care about what was going on with the characters. It's the entire idea of questioning the trust of Akane, Kiryu, government officials, to pull through when this country desperately needs to help, in the wake of a brand new Godzilla. While the original battle sequence isn't really a thrill ride, the ending battle has a massive payoff if you're watching this deep in. No, I don't think it's on the level of GMK, but the stakes are high, and the presentation is extremely focused rather than cutting away to a relevant subplot. To be honest, I can't help but applaud Kiryu's character and portrayal here, because not often do we see a robot with this much character. This is extremely articulate as far as personality goes, and when you watch this film, you just know there's something inside there. It feels more than just a machine. You just remember, the ghost of a very haunting past is lingering. So there's one thing that I really can't leave this review or kind of thought process about this film without touching on. But at the time I first watched this movie, I was very more limited with the information that I knew about the Godzilla series. Years later though, it's interesting knowing where this concept kind of indirectly comes from. It's important to note that at one point there was a Godzilla vs. Ghost Godzilla, which would have been released in 1995. Okay, so I'm never going to go ahead and admit to being a fan of the original Godzilla vs. Ghost Godzilla idea. We were simply off the heels of Space Godzilla and another Mecha Godzilla. So to me, it's kind of bland and uninspiring. But time had passed at this point. The idea of bringing Mecha Godzilla in just makes it work. Rewriting the events of the original slightly to take a concept that seemed dead in the water and give it pure life. One of the most outstanding films in the Millennium Era, only next to GMK. It's a step above Godzilla 2000, and to me, I really believe this film doesn't get the proper hype in the Millennium Era, due to the fact that it's probably largely overshadowed by GMK. The soundtrack? It borrows bits from Godzilla vs. Mechagirus. However, often I believe the pieces here are more memorable in this film with its scenes, along with other new original pieces. Here's a sample. Let's go! Ultimately, what I think further helps this film is the fact that it's the only Godzilla Millennium movie that gets a proper direct sequel. No more redoing the timeline, but follow up with a movie that builds upon the foundation of what we've already laid out, a year later Godzilla Tokyo SOS release. While it would not be the final film in this era, it would be the final film in the Godzilla Kiryu saga. Thank you for joining me. Like, subscribe, have a great day.